This video was originally in our private no labels necessary space, but it was so valuable we had to make it public because there's a certain type of artist that will be on the rise in the future based on this conversation with Adam McGinnis, who's an artist himself who's made a good amount of money and a great living off of his music. And I want to know, based on this conversation, are you ahead of the trend or are you going to be behind on this trend? Either way, go is something really, really important to think about as an artist yourself and how you move going forward check out this entire conversation it's going to start a little interesting but trust me about two minutes in he's going to pull it together and it's one of the most intriguing conversations we've had in our network space another thing i wanted to dive into that we spoke about previously was the your concept of the conscious artist Can you do mm -hmm. explain to the viewers what that means to you and um, you know, how, sure. how you Sure. So similar to um, look at most of the things that we put into our bodies, uh, every single orifice, so every hole that we have in our body, we are ingesting information or some sort of resource. So what we see, what we speak out of our mouths, every time there's a hole in our ears, we're taking in something. So for many years, people would smoke on airplanes, which we now know is crazy. There was babies there. There, were, you know, old people there. It's not. It was a thing of like normal. Some old planes still have cigarette holders in there, and there was a time where it was normal for everyone to heat up microwavable dinners, and that was a normal thing where everyone was doing it. And then people started realizing, like, wait a second, this might not be too good for our health. Either of these things. So you start to see them kind of die out, and you started seeing the the infrastructure of things like whole foods and organic foods. And then people going, doing more meditation and this little change of people going so far left of doing things that are really bad for them. And then realizing, wait a second, we should probably pull things back over here to this thing that's actually beneficial for ourselves. And so the important part is I think more people now are becoming aware of what I'm putting into my body. I think more so than ever, because you'll see these blogs of someone's like, did you know that this plastic was in such and such, and that can happen in straws? And so people are like, we don't even want straws anymore. So we're starting to see the new wave of people who are realizing that what you put into your body will directly affect what comes out of you and what stays inside of you, no matter how you try to word it. So if you think of it like the radio station is a channel, it's finding waveforms and then you're going on while you're switching and then you're choosing the channel that you resonate with at that current time. So whatever that is, if it's, if you go into a channel and everyone's like talking about this or talking about that, whatever it is, it's the one that you agree with. So you have to agree with the messages and you more probably have to agree with the program. It's called a radio program. So it's finding waves. It's connecting with you because you're an antenna and then you are agreeing to the messages of that. So those messages that you're coming in and that you're ingesting are becoming a part of you on a subconscious level and they are programming you. I believe over the next 10 years, people are going to become very conscious and aware of that because you're going to look out in the world and you realize, why are so many people doing X? And then if you could say, well, it's connected to the kind of music they listen to and the kind of foods they eat and the kind of media they ingest and their environment, you'll say, well, it, it would make more sense if we changed one of those pieces and we'll get a different outcome. Different income gives us a different outcome. And so conscious music, I believe, is artists who start to think about what am I actually putting into the words of my songs? What am I actually doing with the frequencies in my beat? Am I helping or hurting my public? Because if if you took music, which is a form of magic, that, that's what it is. It's, it's an energy form that can connect people from all around the world, no matter what their age is, can take people who could be in Alzheimer's states and they can remember their childhood from a song. Music's like a, a transportation method as far as like a timeline jump, but also it can heal you. And there's many studies that are coming out about the, the power of frequency. I believe in the next 10 years, artists will have albums in different frequencies. You'll have albums in 440, but then you have an album in 432. It'll, it'll say if someone is, if your fans want something that's, that's um, helping with depression, here's the frequency that's best for that, for your album to be tuned to. So as we become more conscious with our food, as we become more conscious of the things we put inside our eyes, like I don't watch gory films anymore. When I was a kid, I used to watch horror films. I thought that was cool. Now, even those images, I'm just like, oh, I don't want it. I don't want it in my brain. I don't need it. 
on the radio when I get in my car, and it's because I have a lot of conscious music because we we work on building it. When I put on the radio station, when my car first pops on, whatever the hot 97 or hot whatever, the frequencies are so jarring to my ear now that I actually have to shut it off with like a passion. It's a fast, like get that thing off because I can feel the crunchiness and how it's affecting me because now my ears have been recalibrated for something that's actually aligned with my body from doing so much conscious music. So everything down to helping artists and helping the industry create music that is more in line, almost like if you're going to Whole Foods, it feels good for you. It's organic for you. It makes you a better person because you're inputting something that actually has been thought about and outputting something into the world that actually you're, you're be proud of and be valiant with. I think that we're losing we're losing nobleness. We're losing valiancy. We're losing these things that actually should be really good for society. And a lot of it comes down to the music and what's in front of us in the media. And we're rewarding destruction, but then we're shocked when it happens all around us. So I think at a certain point, the noblesmen, the valiant people will come forward and go, wait a second, why are we doing this? And why are we letting other people control how our society is run when these people really don't care what gets in front of the kids or gets in front of our eyeballs? Like they don't care. They, they just want to make money and make shock. Why don't we just stop listening or stop buying? And when that real thing happens of like, why are we watching all these videos about the devil? That's weird. There's like 10 pop artists who all have devil in their video this year. Why? Why have so many hip hop artists died over the last three years? Why is there so many people getting shot and so many drug overdoses? And how come no other industry is talking about it? No one's worried about 250 country artists dying. No one's worried about 250 pop artists dying. But in hip hop, all of a sudden it's happening and no one's talking about the news. When there's like this massive understanding of what's really happening and people go, wait a second, how come we just don't do something and change it on our own? When that moment happens, that will be the conscious pop revolution. And I say con pop means just popular and con, con being conscious and aware of what they're doing. So I believe that's the future. I think the next 10 years of music will go towards that. And I, I can already tell you that there isn't a, there is um, a market for it for musicians who feel that way. Uh, it's not Christian. It's not religious. It's not that. This is people who are just thinking a little bit more in depth about their music. If you go back to old school hip hop, a lot of it was conscious. It was talking about situations that were trying to better their communities and stuff. Like it was a different thing. So next 10 years, there'll be a change also because, and we'll get into this later, there'll be the ability for artists to not have to compete so hard with mainstream artists. Indie artists won't have to do so much work because of AI. See, right now it's really hard. So, so I've met artists, for instance, and I'll give you this little backstory and we can move on to the next question, but I've had artists who have sent me songs and they are so just like, shoot this and taking Molly and, you know, smack an ass and drop the things. And it was just all, all of it. Right. And then we talked for two hours and I said, just out of curiosity, like, why do you, is this the life you live? And like, do you want to continue this life? And they're like, no, not really. I'm like, then why are you writing about it? And they're like, well, because that's what the fans like. And I'm like, okay, well, you're trying to appease a group of people that you don't even really know. Why are you doing that? Well, I'm doing it for money. Okay. Well, what if I can tell you can make money with talking about what you really want to talk about, though? And if you look at Andre 3000's new album, I don't know if you've heard of it, but he, it, the, the one of the songs is like, I swear I really tried to make a hip hop album. And it's like conscious music. So what happens is when people realize that they can make money, doing the thing that they actually love to do, everything changes. And that is just, that's a new element that will be coming in where you don't have to compete with the major labels and try to shock jock because there'll be AI that can find a demographic that actually connects to what you're saying and what you believe in and what you stand for, which is different. And that hasn't been around before. Everyone's been competing with eyeballs. So you're like, I got to be more shocking than him or her because they have the eyeballs. When the eyeballs change, the money changes because where your eyes go is where your attention goes. And I'm letting you know, there's, I have a bunch of friends now who are working in this field and the money is going that way. There's a lot of fans who are like, oh, I don't want to keep watching this. I'm tired of it. I'm, my receptors are numbed out on it. But this other thing over here, this is making me feel good. And wherever people feel good, that's where they spend money. So what do you think? The catalyst is going to be to really, you know, shift this way. Is it going to be the major label artists going in this direction, or is it going to be a, a ground sort of an independent artist movement? Independent artists. I think independent artists always change the story. I mean, 
whenever a new sound comes into the mainframe, it wasn't started by a major label artist. Like when Trap came out, it wasn't because big artists were doing it. It was, it was like underground. People were putting it out on SoundCloud and it was kind of moving. When Dubstep came out, it was underground. People started using it in pop songs, but it started off like underground. Whenever there's a movement that's underground and then starts to build, if you think of the concept, it's building up, it hits the ground surface and then it pops through once it gets sunlight. The sunlight is usually money. So it's underground, then it pops through, then all of a sudden it gets sunlight and then people know about it. So I think that's what's going to happen. It's going to be a movement of people, which it's already starting. Like there's already concerts, it's happening, but it's happening in a scale like, for instance, I have friends just last week, they performed in theory, a lot of people don't know them, but they sell to a 1500 seater. 1500 seater sold out for a band that not a lot of people know about, but they're a conscious band is a big deal. Because that means they are making enough of an impact in their area that people are coming to concerts. I have another friend who, who usually has about 3,000 seaters per show. That is decent enough to say, okay, listen, if this is starting, what happens in 10 years? I can see artists across the board having 3,000, 5,000. Because there's some artists right now who are on the radio and they can't pack 3,000 people. So, yeah, I think it's starting. It's just, it'll, it'll happen more as... Um, people start to to hear about it and start to hear about frequencies and start to hear about these things and get interested into them. And that's what we do in our company. You got me thinking about earlier when you mentioned about, oh, there'll be different, you know, the same song could be in like different frequencies depending on your mood. I'm thinking about that's probably the next evolution from the current obsession of like things being sped up and pitched up and slowed down on TikTok. Maybe the next thing will be, uh, hey, here's some of your favorite pop songs, but I've changed all the different frequencies depending on how you're feeling. There you go. I'll give you an example. We have um, a friend who owns a company that they have a watch that um, they're able to find the frequency of different states of being, and they're able to capture that frequency and put it into this watch. So let's say REM sleep, if you want to get really deep sleep, or um, let's say if you want a lot of energy. So it's almost like you had a, a shot of caffeine, but that experience when your body changes its resonant tone there's a frequency that changes and you can capture that in a number form. You can put that number into this watch. So when we want to have deep sleep, you literally go to the watch, you scroll down to deep sleep, you press REM and within like three minutes, you're knocked out, but it's based on frequency. So as the world starts to become more aware of frequency, because that's everything, everything is frequency. And once people start to understand that we can catalog this, Music is the biggest agent of frequency because it holds it. If you enjoyed this clip, you can check out the full conversation for absolutely free at www.nolabelsnecessary.com where we have not only this conversation, but many private conversations that we've had with our group. So go ahead and hop in. Again, that's www.nolabelsnecessary.com. You got to put in the www for some reason or just click the link below if you're on YouTube. It's in the description somewhere. Peace.